Good morning. 1973 was not a super year for me in northern Ontario. I turned three years old and I still couldn't talk. Imagine that. So they took me to the doctors and the doctors gave me a pretty bad diagnosis. Mental retardation. So there's a concession to my detractors. And that diagnosis was never, to my knowledge, revoked. So I'm still retarded, I guess. A further concession. And some people say I still can't even talk very good. And they're right. Now elsewhere in the world, it was a lean year for Hebegon sightings and findings. Only three in 1973. All right, February 3rd, witness M.K., 54 years old, and three other witnesses, a group of four people, saw the Hibagon in a place called Mikawachi Ipomatsu. That's a mouthful. And that's not on any map. And there's no record of it on the internet. Now it sounds like the name of a company. And it probably just closed decades ago and left no trace. There's no town name in this record, so I'm assuming that it was inside Joe Yuki. The witnesses saw the creature walking on two legs. It was covered in brown hair, and they said that it was thin. And in early February, yeah, that could be expected after a long, hard winter where you're mostly waiting it out in your heba hole, living off of your fat reserves, and who knows, maybe some cured meats and stockpiled beach mast. Of course, I'm speculating. April 23rd, witness N.K., 42 years old, sees the Hibagon in Saijo Yuki along Route 314. Route 314 runs north-south, and it is the eastern road making up the Yuki Loop. The Gaby train line runs along it. It was seven kilometers south of here, remember, that the Hebagon was seen along the same Gaby train line down at Hibayama Station. That's the southeast foot of Mount Hiba on the left side of your screen. A little more to the left off screen is the Kumano Shrine. You might remember that place. N.K. says that the creature was swaying side to side. And you've heard that before. June 20th, witness S.O., 33 years old, sees a hibigan in Kawagitacho. That's a little farming hollow just north of Shobara City. This creature looked like a gorilla. It was covered in brown hair, and it was approximately 160 centimeters tall. And that's all we have for official sightings in 1973. Now, in megalith news, I still don't have anyone to go up there with me next weekend. All I'm getting is excuses, excuses. Well, I'm friends with the wife of an alderman. I saw her yesterday and asked if she could help to arrange an escort from City Hall to escort me up Mount Zao before dawn next 5th or 6th of February. Can't go on the 4th, the ancient New Year day, 
But the sun will come up at 109 degrees for two more days. And I think someone from City Hall should come along and confirm this discovery and document it. This is a precious treasure and part of a part of a part of the world heritage in my opinion even if i am clinically retarded and can't talk very good this lady friend is going to take my diagrams and sun table to her husband the alderman and we'll see where that goes but apparently according to her this city doesn't even have a a rapid megalith response team so where's my tax money going? I just don't know. But anyway, this lady is a good friend for over 20 years. Now, I also have a journalist lady friend. She did a real good article on my book last year. And I thought maybe she'd like this scoop. So we'll see about that. I will email her. Anyway, you have a good weekend, and I still have some friends that I can invite. Otherwise, I am planning to tamp down my natural cowardice and fear of the dark and heights and wild boar and climb up there alone, weather permitting, and, of course, Lord willing. All right.